What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I want to show you guys how to set up Plex on Ubuntu 20.04. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I wanted to show you guys how to set up Plex. Now, I know I did a video a while back on Plex showing you guys how to install it on 18.04. And that's a pretty old video, so I just figured I'd redo it using the most up-to-date long-term release of Ubuntu server. And I noticed that I still get a lot of questions on that video. And that's another reason I want to go down and make a new one using the latest and greatest version of Ubuntu 20.04, at least the long-term release of it. Now, so you guys know, Plex is a streaming media server that allows you to organize your videos, uh, music, and photo collection and stream it from anywhere in the world by creating a server. And also Plex Media Server can be installed on all major operating systems. So Windows, Mac OS, as well as Linux. And like I stated, I'll be showing you guys how to set it up on Ubuntu 20.04. So let's hop over to the Plex website so I can show you guys a little bit more about it before we get started. Okay, cool. So I'm at Plex.tv. This is the actual website for the Plex Media Server where you can get the software and actually download it and install it on whatever operating system you choose. And if I move the mouse up here to downloads, you'll see that uh, Plex Media Server is right here. So you can click right there and that'll allow you to download whatever version you need. As you can see, it kind of recognized my operating system as Linux, so it automatically selected the Linux version. But if we click right here, you'll see there is the Windows version, the Mac version, as well as free BSD, which is super cool. And then also they have Synology, which I thought was dope as well. As well as I love seeing free NAS. That's there as well. So you can install Plex on all of these different devices and get it set up and share all your media from this one application but like i stated i wanted to walk you guys through how to actually set it up on linux so let's hop over to the terminal and go through this process okay cool so i'm logged into my ubuntu 20.04 server and this is pretty much a fresh server on my proxmox hypervisor and the first thing we need to do in order to get plex installed is to add the apt repository and the first command will actually import the repository keys, uh, GPG key. So let's go down and paste it in there. And I'm gonna just copy and paste this stuff. And, and I'll put all the commands down in the description of the video. So you can kind of follow along with me as we go through this process. But let's press enter. This will download the Plex key. So we'll get that and that'll download and store it in the proper location for us. And what it was waiting on was my sudo password and then it downloaded the key and then added it to the apt repository and the next command we want to run basically as the plex repository to our sources list so if we press enter that'll add this file plex plexmedia.list and that'll add that repository so we can actually pull the package from that repository and since we had a key, that'll give us access to it. Now, all we have to do is run sudo apps updates, and this will refresh the cache, as well as you'll see that Plex repository is there now. So as you can see, we got both of those repositories there is cached now. We could just go down and install the Plex media server. So all we have to do is type sudo apps install Plex media server and tap that out press enter that'll install everything we need all the dependencies for it as well as the plex media server and get it all set up for us and you may see this during the installation i'm pretty sure you will see this during the installation and basically what this is asking you is every time plex is updated do you want to take the maintainer's version of any configuration files that they push and I typically do no. So if I make changes to the configuration file, it's not overwritten by whatever is sent over during the updates. So as you can see, that's a default. Default is no. 
So we're gonna uh, keep it as no. That way it doesn't overwrite any changes that we made to the server as far as configuration files goes. And that's pretty much it for the install. Now there's a little bit more configuration and we'll go through that. And one of, one, one of the first things you wanna do is actually verify that Plex is actually running. So we can run sudo system CTL and then status. And then all we have to do is type in Plex uh, and I'm gonna tab it out, but it's Plex Media Server dot service. So let's press enter. And then basically what you're looking for is if it's active and running. And then also, as you can see right here, the service is enabled. So that lets you know that it'll store it up every single time you reboot the server. Plex is one of the services that will store it on the server every time you reboot. So you don't have to worry about rebooting and the service not actually starting soon as the server comes up. So let's press Q and that'll get us out of there. Um, drop us back to the command line. And the next thing you wanna do is actually verify the firewall settings because that's the only way you can actually access the, the Plex server is if your ports are open on the firewall, if you have the firewall enabled, which I recommend you do with any Ubuntu server, especially if it's facing the internet. You want to make sure you have a firewall on just to basically limit the access of anyone accessing the server. And I'm 100% sure UFW is not enabled at the moment because this is a fresh server. I'm sure I haven't had it turned on, but actually let's check right fast. So we could just run sudo uh, UFW and then status. And we can check the status of it. And as you can see, it's in inactive, but you want to turn that on. So I want to show you guys how to actually turn that on first um, by adding a profile to our UFW configuration. And I'll show you guys how to actually do that. And all we're going to do is go into sudo and then nano. And we're basically going to create a file under etc. Uh, and then there's a UFW folder in there. And then we could just type applications because that's where the, the profiles are stored. So any custom profiles that you create, you want to store them under application D, under UFW, and ETC. And let's name this thing Plex Media Server. Boom. And let's press enter. And I already have the profiles. Uh, copied into a text file so let's go down and just paste them in there and you guys won't see you'll see it pop up but that's basically the format you basically have uh, three profiles in here plex media server plex media server uh, dlna and then plex media server all and we're going to use the all but i'm gonna press uh control x and y is asking me to save so that's why we type Y and then we press enter and that'll store it in that file location. And since we use sudo, you know, that allowed us to write that file to that location because this directory is owned by the root account. So you need to type sudo in order to get to it. So just verify or make sure you type sudo when you run this command. Now, the next thing you want to do is actually refresh the profiles. That's typically what I do. So I just typically uh, type sudo uh, UFW and then app, I believe, and then updates and then Plex. It should be able to tab it out. Well, maybe not Plex media server and press enter. And I'll just update it. Just verify it's there. Now let's go down and allow it through the firewall. And the reason I haven't inactivated it yet because I'm connected to the server over SSH and I may lose my connection if SSH is not there as well. So I wanna activate SSH first. So let's type sudo UFW, UFW, allow. And then I believe it's called open ssh I believe that's what it is yeah so open ssh that'll you know add port 22 as a rule in there to allow traffic through that port now we can type the exact same thing and allow the plex media server so let's type plex media server and then that one is or in in order to enable them all is a dash all and let's press enter 
and that should add that as well. Now let's go down and enable UFW. So basically all we have to do is type sudo UFW enable and press enter. And that'll actually, you know, it'll basically say that I may lose my or disrupt my SSH connection. But in the past, I've never had that issue because I've always added that open SSH rule before I enabled UFW. Otherwise, it'll lock you out the server and you'll have to connect to it physically, especially if it's a physical computer. So let's just type Y for yes, press enter, and we should be good to go. Yeah, as you can see, I'm still connected to the server. Now let's go down and uh, type sudo uh, UFW, and then let's check out the status right fast. Uh, and this will show us all those rules that we have open. So as you can see, we got Plex Media Server dash all allow. So that'll allow all connections for the specific ports for Plex. And then also, if you run it this way, let me show you this. Uh, you can actually see a little bit more information if you type verbos uh, after status. So let's press enter and it'll give us all the ports as well as the information behind it. So to action from. So allow in, allow in when everything pretty much and anywhere. Now, one of the last things you want to do is actually add a repository for Plex to actually manage all your media. And this can be a remote drive. You can mount a different drive to it if you want to, but the default location or the recommended location is under the op directory. So let's go down and create a folder right fast. So we could type sudo make the or, and then we'll use the dash P option, which will create uh, parent and child folders. So we don't have to run the make direct make directory command multiple times in order to create a folder and then folders underneath the folder if you if you get what i'm saying so if we go uh to the op directory we can create a folder called plex media and then you can create all your various folders under here and let's create uh movies and that'll be the only folder i create so let's say we have our movies there and let's press enter and I'll create that folder for us. It'll create both of those folders for us. Now you can uh, kind of solve the permission issues a couple different ways. Cause I noticed in my last video, a lot of people had permission issues. Well, Plex creates an account on the server when it's installed called Plex. Now you can give it ownership to this actual folder, which I'll do that, do it that way, just to make it simple. But you can also change the permissions by using chmod and just modify it so it can read and write within that directory or any user can read and write or if you want to create a group and then add the plex user to a specific group that can read and write that directory so it's all depending on how you want to set up your security for this directory i'm gonna just do it a simple way by giving plex the ownership of this directory so if we type sudo ch own and then dash capital or and then we want to give the plex account and and let's give it full right so that's the group and the user so the first one is a user and the second one is the group that's why i'm typing it twice which you don't have to i've seen uh throughout you know documentation that i've read you could just put the first one there and it'll automatically put the group as well but opt and then plex media and it'll capture all the folders that you create underneath it. So they'll all be owned by Plex. Uh, you may have to run this command if you add more folders after this. Like if you have a TV show directory that you wanna add, then you have to run this command just to change the ownership. So Plex can actually read and write to this directory. So let's go down and press enter. That'll change the ownership to the Plex account. And that's pretty much it. That's all the configurations that we need to do in order to get plex up and running now the next thing you need to do is actually go to the ip address using uh port 32400 and that'll continue the configuration for it so let's switch back over to the browser and i'll walk you guys through the remainder of the configuration so we can get things going okay cool so i had a browser up 
and all you have to do to continue the configuration is to go to the IP address and you have to put port 32400 and then I believe it's web after that uh, so let's press enter and it'll bring up this Plex server that we have set up so and if this pops up that lets you know that it's all good to go and there's a simple configuration uh, that you go through to actually set this thing up and I already have an account, but I, but the first thing you want to do is actually sign in to your Plex account. I'm going to log in using my email account, but if you don't have an account, all you have to do is sign up with your email or you use uh, your Google account, Facebook, which I don't recommend just, just create an account using your email address. All right, cool. So I logged in using my account and it's going to try to configure the remainder ports of the server and then it'll pop up with a basic setup and i'll walk you guys through that once it actually gets there all right and the first thing that'll pop up it basically talks about how plex works so you can read you know this information i'm gonna just say it got it because i already understands it and then the next thing is going to pop up with the plex pass now there is a paid version of plex as far as using this service and basically this allows people to download as well as you know you have some parental controls uh, live tv dvr webhooks all that good stuff uh they have a 4.99 plan which is monthly uh a 40 dollar plan for yearly and then 119 for the lifetime so at the end of the day the easiest way or the simplest way to actually if you want to get a plex pass account is to play, pay for the lifetime because that'll be the cheapest, you know, especially if you use this thing for years to come. And we can scroll down, you'll see a little bit more of the information that's there. Uh, they do have dashboards, you know, premium music, all, all kind of little stuff that they offer under the Plex Pass. And I'm not sponsored by Plex in any way. So just take this with a grain of salt. I'm just giving you guys the information and walking you guys through the process. So I'm gonna skip this just by pressing the X now the next thing you want to do is actually get a server name you can name it whatever you want uh i'm gonna just leave it as you serve 20 which is the server name as you can see this checkbox is already set up to allow access outside of my home so if you don't want it to be accessed outside your home network then uncheck that box and that'll stop it from being accessed outside of your network so uh, i'm gonna just hit next there but that's pretty much it right there it was you know set up the server name uh and the next step is actually setting up the media library and all you have to do is hit add library and then select what type of library it is so i set up a movies folder so all we have to do is select movies and then we can leave the name there and then hit next and it'll take you down to add the folder so we can browse for that media folder that we set up under opt and all we have to do is go up a directory so we can go up and then scroll down try to find uh, the opt directory which is I passed it so you just select opt and then Plex media and movies and then all we have to do is hit add and if you have files there it'll go down and store adding those files once we hit add library and you can add multiple libraries at that point uh but we're gonna leave it there i don't have any files in that directory like i said this is a virtual machine so it won't work 100 percent properly because i don't have any media files but i'll go down and pull up my plex server that i actually use here at the house with all my extra stuff on there or with all my movies and stuff on there and i'll kind of show you guys a little bit of how it actually works so let's hit done there and as you kind of see it kind of pulls up my other account as you can see anyway because it's tied to my uh, i logged in using my personal account so it pulled up you know a lot of movies i have and all that stuff and as you can see i'm kind of on a western uh <laughs> kind of western uh kick right now so i've been watching western movies and stuff like that but that's my main server up there which i kind of didn't want to show you guys but since this will probably be you guys's first server that you set up then you won't have anything there it'll say movies is empty and then you can add movies to that directory and it'll start showing up as we seen under my my other one and i won't go through and show you guys everything on my server i just wanted to kind of give you some 
overview of how it actually works but basically once you have stuff added you can go through and find you can search up here this will collapse right here this will collapse that menu so we can make it smaller uh, so you see everything but one of the cool things i want to show you guys is the actual settings there's a whole bunch of settings in here um and you have your account information and i won't go through each one of these but it's a lot of information in here or a lot of changes that you can make to the server like you can modify your your libraries i think it's right here um and a whole bunch of like plugins that you can add and all that good stuff so so hopefully that helps you guys set up your own plex media server if you follow those steps as you can see it's a very simple process and you can get through it fairly easy using ubuntu 20.04 you can set up your own headless server using a re recycled computer and connect a couple hard drives to it and start storing your media in that location and set up your own media server at the house so i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions leave comments down in the comments below and of course keep it techy